45 degrees in either direction. At the very end is a bony mass, like a built-in sledgehammer. A giant mace that's really well built for smashing into the heads or the legs of Tyrannosaurus and its relatives. All told, this tail packs a punch powerful enough to shatter the leg bones of almost any predator, no matter how big. An impact from that club could crush bone, shatter teeth, if not kill the T-Rex outright, wound it in such a way that it's likely to starve to death. Like a wrecking ball weighing almost 100 pounds, swinging at a speed of 48 miles per hour, it strikes a devastating blow. The tip is designed not to split on impact. It absorbs the stress of all that firepower. The hammer gives because it's not solid bone. Instead, it's honeycombed with soft tissue, marrow, blood, and fat. Ankylosaurus combines steel-like protective plates with a powerful offensive weapon. The result, a creature with few rivals over more than 100 million years of evolution. Ankylosaurus represents the end of the history of the armored dinosaurs, the ultimate in dinosaurian tanks. But some dinosaurs don't rely on body armor and weapons for defense. They have an entirely different strategy. Grow bigger. Much, much bigger. Montana. It's not called the Wild West for nothing. Hungry predators are everywhere. In response, prey develop an awesome array of defensive strategies. Strategies that don't rely on intelligence, but on physical traits. Sora Poseidon is a gargantuan beast, growing to 50 tons or more. Sora Poseidon was one of the largest animals that ever lived on land. If you're gigantic, there are fewer and fewer predators that can attack you. So getting big is the only game in town. A fully grown Sora Poseidon is 60 feet tall and almost 100 feet long. Its neck alone is four stories long. A single vertebrae almost as tall as a grown man. And a single thigh bone weighs over half a ton. They seem to break all of the rules. There's nothing like them around today. Containing over 72 million calories of fresh meat, you'd think Sora Poseidon would be the jackpot for a bloodthirsty carnivore. They don't have horns, they don't have armor. Really, the only anti-predator defense they have is sheer size. But size does matter. When a goliath like this is fully grown, even the most vicious predators keep their distance. Even the most ferocious raptor of the Cretaceous, Deinonychus. Yet at 200 pounds, this raptor pales in comparison to its 50-ton quarry. If we're talking about a single adult Deinonychus and a single adult Sora Poseidon, the story would go something like this. Hi, I'm a Deinonychus. I'm a Sora Poseidon. But for a Sora Poseidon, reaching full size can take years. Worse, fossil evidence shows that juveniles live alone, separated from the herd until they reach at least a third of their adult weight. That means for nearly a decade, they wander the forest alone. And that forest is crawling with Deinonychus. Intelligent and well-armed, they hunt on their own or sometimes in packs. They run with a top speed of 40 miles per hour. And using a powerful slashing claw like a switchblade, these raptors can take on a youngster. Even a youngster weighing as much as 10,000 pounds. And five tons of raw meat is quite a meal. 
For a young Sora Poseidon, there's just one solution. Get big fast. And that's going to take a lot of fuel. The number one concern in life would be feeding the beast. The land is covered in vast forests of ferns, pines, and monkey puzzle, an ancient conifer. Many of these plants have almost no nutritional value. The hardest job in the animal world, the dinosaur world, was not T-Rex's job. Digesting meat is a piece of cake. It's very, very simple. Digesting plant fiber is the hardest job in the world. To gain enough nutrients to grow indestructibly large, Sora Poseidon has to chow down huge amounts of vegetation. They were like walking vacuum cleaners. If you've got 40 or 50 tons of flesh to feed and you eat low quality food, you have to put away hundreds of pounds, maybe a ton of this stuff every day. When growing is your best defense, gaining weight is serious business. So Sora Poseidon does away with time consuming tasks like chewing. If you could just swallow that stuff and let your giant stomach mash it up for you, you could move in a lot more food per unit time and you could get a lot bigger. Sora Poseidon's 52 chisel-like teeth are perfectly designed for the job. They can rake leaves and twigs right off a tree. They've got these big teeth that are just cropping devices. They just bite down on a branch and either take the whole branch or strip the leaves and needles off and then swallow it down. To be able to digest this huge volume of food and grow big enough to avoid attack requires a stomach as large as a ton. That's as big as a swimming pool and it's filled with acid so concentrated it can dissolve iron. I mean, it had to be able to hold maybe a ton or more of plant material at a time and we're talking about something huge. Surprisingly, it isn't something huge which allows these giant herbivores to grow big enough to be all but invincible. In fact, it's something incredibly small. Something meat eaters lack. Below Sora Poseidon's stomach are two gigantic organs called cica, similar to our appendix. Humans stopped using an appendix millions of years ago when we started eating meat. A Sora Poseidon would die without one. The Sika are home to millions of microscopic organisms. They break down the tough fibrous walls of plant cells. It has this whole little world inside of microbes that's helping it digest its food. That's end in little tendrils that help break open those cell walls, help liberate those nutrients, and that's what helps the animals survive. And the result of this incredible feat of engineering? One final trick that keeps predators at bay. Sauropods are probably burping and farting almost continuously because that's what big plant eaters do. And they would have been noisy, smelly, unpleasant animals to be around. Despite all these adaptations, all of this specialized biology that has allowed Sora Poseidon to grow to mammoth proportions. There is one part of its body that simply hasn't kept up, its brain. Animals like Sora Poseidon are really the poster child for the dumb dinosaur. Sora Poseidon has a brain less than the thousands of its body size, the equivalent of a human being with a brain the size of a pea. Lobes for both sight and smell are tiny. Areas controlling information analysis, learning, and complex thought are barely developed. If you look at the size of their brain, you actually have to kind of wonder how these animals managed. But they did manage. Physical size makes up for every other shortcoming. Surviving for 15 million years, these mammoth creatures spread out across the globe onto every continent except Antarctica. But there's another dinosaur that doesn't rely on size. It uses an even more unusual trick to keep off the menu. 
the most sophisticated communication system ever developed in the prehistoric world. Plant-eating dinosaurs are marvels of animal engineering, defending themselves against the most ferocious predators using science, armor, a club for a tail, swords and a shield. Yet there's one vegetarian that lacks any obvious weaponry. A Parasaurophilus is a duckbill, named for its duck-like beak. Weighing in at almost four tons, it's not tiny. But facing off against a seven-ton predator like a T-Rex would be suicide. They have no fangs, no armor at all, no spikes or horns anywhere in the body. They seem to be large, vulnerable targets. Parasaurophilus range across a vast area, more than 100,000 square miles from Alberta, Canada to New Mexico, a region with more than its share of vicious predators. What has puzzled all of us is, how did they protect themselves? The most important clue to this mystery is buried inside their skull. Parasaurophilus has the biggest brain of all herbivores. And one part of that brain is abnormally large, the area responsible for hearing and interpreting sounds. It's called the auditory cortex. What was a surprise is the higher centers of their brain are very large and suggest that something very different is going on in Parasaurolophus and its kin than in most other of these, uh, of these plant-eating dinosaurs. But how does an advanced auditory cortex help a Parasaurophilus defend itself against monster carnivores? First of all, its acute hearing can detect an approaching predator from miles away. Then most importantly, it can react, deploying an unusual weapon. A distinctive sound that originates deep inside a strangely shaped head crest. The crest contains the animal's nasal cavity, a tube that loops around twice, creating a chamber eight feet long. Calls, vibrations originating in the voice box, travel along these tubes. Like the chambers of a trombone, those tubes amplify and lower that sound. The result, an extremely low frequency hum, even deeper than a foghorn. Each species has its own distinct shape. Each species would have its own distinct sound. 